Hello, Brad here, just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Hello there, big geeks. It's Thursday 5pm. Thursday 5pm. Thursday's the new Friday. I mean, every day is the new Friday in, in pandemic land. (laughs) Um, and when you work in the craft beer industry mm, great stuff yeah but it is thursday for once johnny because over here in the uk we've got a bank holiday weekend not quite sure what that means anymore but it certainly means we shouldn't be working tomorrow even though we are working johnson said we've we've basically had a year off and we all need to go back to work to which i say fuck you boris johnson Boris. I don't know can, what you've been doing for the last year, but I've been working. He's been shagging around, hasn't he, by all accounts? Yeah. And being a general <laughs> dickhole. Straight into the politics <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> so today is, yeah, it's Thursday. I think most most uh, Christian-leaning countries have, have tomorrow off for Good Friday. Um, but we're going to have a great Friday because tomorrow is, of course, Siren Craft Brew's eighth birthday, and we're helping to host their digital celebrations of that starting from 2 p.m. Um, if you've bought the box or if you're one of our Patreons, you can join us. Uh, the link's in our Discord forum uh, or obviously in the beer boxes that you've got. Uh, and we've got some amazing stuff lined up. We're cooking burgers with Melissa Cole. We're debating independence with uh, some interesting people. We're doing a Q&A with... Uh, Darren and special guests, Darren's the founder, and lots of other things. So yeah, uh, we've got a great Friday coming up. It's, it's kind of nuts. This is the second craft beer festival that we've hosted in under a week. <laughs> yeah, we've got another one next week. Yeah. So yeah, but I mean, it's literally been, le- hasn't it been less than seven days since we did uh, Five Points? Yeah, it has. Yeah. Six days Man. apart. It's, it's, uh, it's back in silly festival season like we had in uh, in the old world. Pre- exactly pre that thing um so yeah uh do tune in tomorrow if you can um it's april fool's day brad happy april fool's johnny happy april (laughs) fool's um brad and i were just talking before we started recording um brad this morning sent me a a uh image from tiny rebel who claimed they would teamed up with heinz to make a spaghetti hoop beer now, firstly, I want to point out that it's getting increasingly hard to spot the April Fools because there's so much weird shit happening both <laughs> in the world and in the brewing industry. So I was fooled for about a second. Bradley, how long until you realised it was an April well, Fools? Well, you see, I I didn't even know it was April Fools Day today. So mm. I I woke up a bit hazy, and uh, I saw it. I just saw the can of spaghetti oops, and I genuinely love Heinz spaghetti oops. Other brands are available, but are inferior. Um, <laughs> they're just, I don't think you can have much more fun on a fork than than just sort of going along the plate and collecting up the spaghetti hoops one after the other on one of the prongs of a fork. Um, or if you're feeling spicy, doing that on one side, then maybe doing it on the other side, then maybe doing it in the middle. So you get like rings of hoops. you got fork skills, buddy. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I've got I've got some time on my hands when I'm eating spaghetti hoops just to have fun. <laughs> I just think they're a very fun food. Um, I've put them on the top of pizza before. Oh, my that's, God. That's kind of gross, but delicious. <laughs> I Is just, that instead I, of the tomato base or as no, well just, as the tomato base? just as base? well. Why not? Just bung oh them on. God. Get, get them monster. involved. I don't, I don't say I've... I, I haven't done it in the last 10, well, probably 15 years, but when I was a student, I would have done that. 
if we if we go back to your pizza philosophy, if you put spaghetti hoops on pizza, do you have spaghetti hoops on pizza or do you just have pizza with spaghetti hoops? Where does it fit on the lasagna to pizza oh, scale? That's a good question. I don't know if you put las- if you did a layered lasagna that had a layer of spaghetti hoops, which is essentially they are they are pasta, so they're just another layer of of lasagna. Um, but in terms of pizza, it's just pizza, isn't it? Pizza is Good. always just pizza. I'm glad. I'm glad we've cleared that up. Pizza is pizza, guys. You heard it here first. Um, right. So, we'll I'll forgive you a little bit for because um, you didn't realise it was April the first. But I, I think that's also a sign of a how far brewing has gone. But also, Tiny Rebel seem to only produce adjunct beer at this point. And while that's fun, it's a bit of a shame because Kutch and Cali are both great beers, and now you you just never see them. And Club. Yeah. Club uh, I haven't club in yeah. a long time, but I did used to enjoy that beer. I don't know, I don't know whether it's any good anymore. I've kind of, uh, it's got lost in the noise. Basically, I haven't gone gone back for it. Mm. Um, but yeah, so we <laughs> we've seen some other great April Fools. I saw Don Zoko, who um, amazing lager brewery in Hartlepool, um, and also a very funny man, uh, Reese, who owns it. He did one said Don Zoko's main focus is on customer service. And then did another tweet and just put April Fool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> enjoyed that one. Um, McKellar have controversially come out with a beer claiming that it's got COVID antibodies in. I'm not sure whether we're laughing about COVID yet or not. Damn. Yeah, maybe too soon. <laughs> too soon. I mean, we're literally, literally still in it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like the craft beer industry doesn't do April Fool particularly well because we're pretty laughable at the best of times in a generally nice way. Well, it's a, a lot of it, you know, a lot of uh, craft beer world takes itself very seriously. So it's nice to see a little bit of uh, brevity and lightness uh, and silliness around April Fools. I guess that is that is true. We shouldn't be too curmudgeonly saying, "Oh no, this isn't funny. It's too close to the truth." Mm. Like maybe maybe that's where the best comedy is, where it's almost truth. That's it. It hurts the most. Exactly. Um, right, Bradley. This week's video was Oof. all about you. I know, it's quite an uncomfortable position for me, being quite a shy person. But um, yeah, it was, right? It was all about me. Lowbrow. Tech cheats for beer geeks. Um, my first foray into gadget reviews. And, yeah. you know, all that kind of uh, exciting world of technology and how potentially... <laughs> It can allow me as a, a less of an expert than you, Johnny, to maybe get to like genius level or just producing beer that might be of an excellent quality or, you know, a way of dispensing it that's as good as in a pub or all these different things. And I kind of this first one kind of tried to combine a few of those different things. So it was like, can I air quotes homebrew um, without being a home brewer? And can I get a pub fresh pint at home? Um, and can it be good? So that was kind of the first ep. Yeah, to give, to give the playlist a bit of background, um, I wouldn't call it friction, but there's always debates behind the scenes between me and Brad about how how low should we go? <laughs> um, and Brad's been really keen to bring technology in as a, as a way of getting extra people into the channel and a way of opening it up to people that maybe feel a little bit... Um, confused by some of the more geeky moments that we that we have so we we decided the best way to do it you know we we have this these two roles that we we have on the channel where you've got the ultra nerd and the the person asking the questions and now we're sort of flipping it around so hopefully as as this playlist grows i'll start to learn a lot about technology which is not my forte um and be asking brad the questions and 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 seeing seeing if if we can trick trick the beer geeks into or not even trick like impress the beer geeks i guess would be the best that's it i mean i don't think yeah it's always coming from a a place of love and and silliness so it's not i mean it is trying to pull the 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 sheet over your eyes a little bit but um you know i'm trying to just just trying to be good johnny i'm just trying to make you know beers that taste crispy and good and you know uh fun stuff that's enjoyable that's that's silly and um hopefully it can yeah i think i think we could we could bring in a new crowd of people that are coming at it from a different angle um technology i I think is 
I think there's a big crossover between technology and just sort of geekiness in general. So you find a lot of people that are into tech stuff or like cars or whatever. They, they're they probably also into beer. So, you know, there's a good crossover there, we, we, you know, in the, the Venn diagram of the world um, of geeks. We, if we can bring in, in more people through tech and get them on the journey to, to sort of discovering good beer, I think more's the better. Yeah, and it's, I mean, so my, my only concern about this playlist when we came up with it was we might alienate the people that we already had. They they might not be into it. But Brad, the comments have been oh. insane. Just endless positivity. People love this idea, yes, um, which is really reassuring. So we can bring people in and uh, excite the people that we're, um, we we make all our content for. And I, I have to say, like, I think you did a great job of, of presenting it. Oh, um, thanks, a great job of... Um, explaining this this whole new concept um and the comments totally agree it's been nothing nothing but love ever since yeah super nice i mean to be fair johnny you you did all of the amazing edit on it as usual and helped me to craft the story that i wanted to tell so um shout out to you as well mate and uh you know it's nice to to know that people uh we're enjoying my sort of um presenting stylings because I do get a bit nervous. I was never really going to be in front of the camera. So, you know, the whole <laughs> this thing is true. Is... Yeah. The first couple of episodes, you're like, I'll be part of the craft beer channel, but I'm not going in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. Cause I am, I know I, I seem quite boisterous, but I'm quite a shy person and I don't like, I'm a bit like, um, Garth from Wayne's world where if the spotlight goes on him, he just all of a sudden like freaks out. <laughs> That's me basically. So it's, you know, a little bit of Dutch courage filming that. I think it I think it came out well and I'm excited to 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 explore more gadgets and I think you know from all the comments and stuff we're going to get some really great ideas from from all of you guys out there so you know please send us in your ideas of what you'd like me to to explore and review um in terms of beer gadgetry because uh basically I yeah I want to outsource it to everyone and you know get a consensus of what the coolest shit in the world is out there and then cover it yeah let's crowdsource this playlist um speaking of which should we should we dive into the comments mm. um Definitely. do you do you want to go first have you got, got yeah something so i gone? mean i got a lot of really positive comments that I, I i feel would just make me blush if i read them out but um <laughs> i like this one from harry n5 he just said love the title and a different point of access into beer. I'm just getting into it. So as much as I love the more technical, higher level content that you guys make, some lower level stuff is always welcome. And I guess that's that's kind of summed it up to a T. What I what I was hoping for with with um, you know with lowbrow and you know it's it's a different way of bringing in new people from a different angle uh, that, you know, can hopefully get involved in it and, and get on this journey to enjoying great beer. Um, so I just, you know, comments like that were really warming my heart. Because uh, I think, you know, we, we always try and make really inclusive content uh, for everyone and make it fun. But sometimes it does get a little bit technical. Um, I know so- certainly some of it flies over my head. Um, <laughs> even while you're sat there <laughs> even while i'm sat there I'm like, smile and nod boys <laughs> that's it that's it so yeah i mean i think it's cool that you know people are people are uh kind of responding to it being a little bit more lowbrow, a little bit easier mm-hmm. to understand so that was nice um i also came up with this new metric of um measuring how good a gadget is which is a a, a rating system of Crispy boys, five out of five crispy boys, Johnny. One being the worst beer gadget ever, five being the best possible gadget you could imagine. And I had a comment from Liam who just said, Road to five crispy boys. I think that's going to be the name of your autobiography. That's it, hopefully. Hopefully. When we tell the story of Lowbrow, when it how it took over YouTube, it'll be it'll be called The Road to Five Crispy Boys. And at the end of the book you'll award yourself. Or maybe I'll award you it, so it seems less less predictable. I'll award you five crispy boys. Oh, that'd be lovely. Thank you. You're five crispy boys to me, brothers. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're five <laughs> crispy boys to me too. Um, I quite like the idea of taking back the, the crispy boy 
name because I think it could almost be banded around now as a sort of term of not hate but like people dismissive. who maybe yeah, yeah dismissive like oh they're fucking crispy boy dickheads or whatever and I think no crispy boys are enjoyable we should all rejoice in a crispy boy in the summertime so I wanted to take back that word of hate maybe well now Bud Light tried to use it we've got to we've got to take it back we've got to own it before the yeah. big boys do um, so I think we should we should be proud of Crispy Boys and uh, the silliness of of the idea of people that enjoy Crispy Boys. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, in terms of the comments that I picked out, we got Christopher Martin. He said, uh, "Solid show. Keen to see more of this. I try not to admit it this as much as possible. Uh, but extract brewing was enjoyable. All grain. It's just ninety nine percent cleaning. And <laughs> Chris is not wrong. There was well, how much cleaning was there involved? Because I wasn't I wasn't there for that." Like, yeah, I mean, to was be the honest, dock a bit tricky? No, no, none of it was tricky. You just put in the the um, the sort of cleansing granules, shook it up for ten seconds, like click some stuff, unclick some stuff, let it run through the line, uh, and then just rinse it out again. That was pretty much it. And then similar process at the end, except with like warm, bubbly water. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that is dead simple. Real simple, real, real simple. So. Um, you know, you couldn't really ask for it to be a lot simpler. I think maybe that was that was part of the, the you know the potential issue with it, and and how you could raise it to be a you know a slightly better beer is by sort of improving some of the the factors, which I think yeah. we, we might touch upon in the future. Yeah, well, that that was the other comment I picked out, which is from uh, Matt Searle, who said, uh, "Nice one, boys. A cool follow up would be to see you use your." brackets Johnny's brewing knowledge to get the best from the system, perhaps allowing it to condition longer, a little warmer to clean up the diastole, or using some USO5 yeast instead, etc. Um, I think a lot of these things are made to try and make convenience priorities. They're not trying to appeal to brewers, whereas sometimes I'm sure you could get much better results by just making a few minor tweaks to the process, which is definitely true. You know, diacetyl, that's created in all fermentations and it's cleaned up by the yeast towards the end of fermentation. So... Um, you know, Brad was following the instructions to the letter. Um, but if we'd have been able to like sample it or something, um, we'd have known that there was diacetyl and we could have raised the temperature. Um, so basically what, what we might do, we might do a follow up video or we might just do some social stuff as we experiment. But definitely it seems like it needed more maturing time. It was also very hazy. Maybe it could do with like a proper cold crash, like not just going in the fridge, but going to a really cold temperature while still upright. So the stuff... Does it, it collect in the brewing dock, does it? All that gumph, Brad? Like um, I don't actually know that, Johnny. I, I can't say I really noticed. Uh, there wasn't was... a lot of gunk in the brewing dock when he took it off. There was a bit of gunk. There wasn't a lot of gunk. I was just more focused on the noise that it made when I sort of disconnected it <laughs> with the pressure and just going, ah! ah! Yeah. Um, but, well, um, I, I presume there yeah. would have been some yeast coming yeah, there and maybe a out, bo- it? bit more needed to settle out. And then, you know, the longer you condition it, um, probably probably the better given the results that we had. Um, but there's also other stuff we could do. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's there's ideas I have where we could take the lowbrow and make it highbrow and see... Because, you know, that technology from the Pinter is amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, and we could, you could definitely use that as a pro, not a pro home brewer, but a, a keen home brewer as a secondary fermenter to get, you know, um, to get it fermenting naturally um, and, and have a dispense unit. So like a mini keg, basically, um, that has a tap attached. So we're, we'll have a little play with that. And if we can come up with a cool video, uh, we'll definitely do that. So thanks for the idea, Matt Searle and a couple of other people um, said that as well. Um, time's getting on, but we've got a question this week. Um, so if you do want to send in a question, we will, uh, play it live on the podcast and we will answer it live on the podcast. Uh, and you just have to email craftbeerboys at gmail.com. You can either write the question or, uh, of course record it. That's more fun. But we've got a question from Hannibal. Hannibal. Great name. Hey guys. Hope you're doing well. Um, my name's Hannibal and I've brewed three beers so far. However, um, I've done that using sort of kits, I guess, sort of beginner home brewing kits with the malt extract. Um, I just wanted to know what your take was on that, whether you sort of look down on that as bogus uh, cheating and not sort of truly in any way 
uh, artisanal or interesting because you've almost essentially got a set of predetermined um, factors. Um, or if you would say that is a valid entrance into brewing for yourself uh, and experimenting and and sort of working out the, the mechanics of brewing beer. Um, anyway, long time fan, first time caller. Um, thanks for doing what you're doing and keep it up. So firstly, Hannibal, thank you for a very timely question. I mean, you couldn't get better if you tried, mate. This is <laughs> no, excellent. Was, thank you so much. It was it was perfect. Um, so I'd like to start by saying that there is, you know, if you think that beer geeks are entitled and a bit mean and a bit cliquey, <laughs> the homebrew scene is another step beyond. Um, and that's why I think some people feel like extract brewing you know, doesn't get any respect or is pointless or is cheating or or whatever. And in fact, on our Instagram post for this week's video, we got called a piece of shit by somebody (laughs) for daring to do something that was extract brewed. So that's the level of um, ire that is cast towards the idea of extract brewing. Yeah, Mm. exactly. Yeah. Um, But there is nothing wrong with extract brewing. You know, it's a step, right? It's a brilliant way to get into all grain. You learn so much about the process, about cleanliness, about fermentation temperature, about conditioning, about flavor, about off flavors. You'll learn all of that still with extract brewing. Uh, and you could just stop there. You could still make great beer with extract, you know, if you don't want to get really geeky. But you'll also learn loads, loads about all grain. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't, I don't get the hate for it, to be honest. I, I get why people might be snobby who are all grain. And then it, I can imagine if they were in a room with someone who was, who said, "Oh, I'm I'm a brewer," and they went, "Oh yeah, all right. What? How do you brew then?" Oh well, I brew I brew with uh, extracts. I could imagine that just making an insatiable burning fire within the all grain <laughs> brewer's soul if he had to be in like a sort of dinner party setting with this person, thinking they were in the same sort of league. But other than that, I think um, it's. You know, like when you're learning a new language or something, you don't just jump straight in. You learn baby steps. Um, uh, you know, th- this is extract brewing is a baby step and a, and a sort of great introduction into a, a wonderful world of home brewing that, you know, I think you don't necessarily always want to dive straight in. And it, it's it's an easy entry, um, which I don't think we, sh- we should be hating against because it's probably brought a lot of really amazing commercial brewers at this point would have started on all of that stuff exactly they'd have all all probably started with extract um the other thing to note is you know like the pinter aside because that was full extract you just add the yeast put it away extract brewing all that's really doing is is meaning you don't have to necessarily do a mash Mm -hmm. although there's obviously partial mash as well where you combine some some grain with um with extract um so all you're really doing is skipping the mash. Now, obviously, the mash is pretty much the most <laughs> vital <laughs> bit of, of um, actual process in terms of making the wort. But there's still so much you can do and so much if, um, influence you can have over the beer after that point. So you may use extract at the start, but when you add the hops, how you care for your hops... Um, what you do temperature-wise with the yeast, whether you ferment at the right temperature, give it the diastole rest, check on the gravity, give it a cold crash, how you bottle condition it, how long you mature it for. All of this stuff is still massively influential, as influential as the mashes on the flavour. Like All of these things have to come together to make a great beer. So anybody who goes, oh, if you're doing extract, you're not really brewing, is talking nonsense. They're saying you're not really mashing. Yeah. And that's fine, you know. Mashing is an art. There, well, it's a science with 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 some art. But like with all brewing, you know, if you gave a hundred people the same recipe, they you come out with a hundred different beers, whether it was extract or all grain. So, so much of the magic happens after the point where you've made that sugary liquid. So, Hannibal, do not feel bad for being an extract brewer. If you want to take it further, great. If you don't, also great. It's all. It's it's it takes all sorts. Uh, and it's all learning and it's all getting more excited about great beer. Exactly, exactly. At the end of the day, that's it, isn't it? It's just whatever you enjoy, um, whatever level you enjoy doing it at, just enjoy it. 
percent and speaking of enjoy do join us for the siren live show tomorrow it should be really great fun um and if you can't make that then next friday the 9th of april we are doing a uh, more traditional standard craft beer channel monthly live show with the amazing pahala if you don't know them they make some of the best uh dark beers in the world particularly the stronger the more barrel aged the better they make absolutely stunning imperial stouts and we're going to get a tour of their facility and uh talk to to the uh the brewers the brains behind it about some amazing beers we've got imperial sours imperial ipas imperial stouts <laughs> it could be a drunken <laughs> evening bradley um, I'm, I'm terrified already and I've, I've <laughs> got a, i've got another beer festival tomorrow which i'm less terrified about potentially um than that one but yeah i mean that's going to be awesome can people still buy that box johnny you can still buy that box. Uh, I believe it's still in stock on beermerchants.com, but also with, with these ones, the ones we do with Cave Direct, they're also sold at indie bottle shops all around the UK. Awesome. Um, so you can also go to, uh, just check with your local bottle shop. I'll put a link to a tweet that Cave Direct put live with uh, a list of the stockists so nice. that you can track it down. So yeah, if we don't see you tomorrow, we'll see you next Wednesday for another upload. We've got an exciting Lambic-based episode coming at you. And then, yeah, we'll see you next Friday uh, for some... <laughs> imperial sized fun with Pahala The Bubble Podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer Channel Head to youtube.com slash the craft beer channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes. If you love what we do, please, please, please do subscribe and even join our Patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel Love and beer